Shalom. I'm Eddie Chomney of Hebraic Heritage Ministries, and we welcome you to this week's Focus Israel Report. In this week's report, we're going to share with you the current status of Benjamin Netanyahu's effort to form his new government coalition. Zippy Livni, the leader of the political party Hatnua, which means the movement, who previously led peace negotiations with the Palestinians under the government of former Israeli Prime Minister Ehud Olmert, made an agreement with Benjamin Netanyahu this week to join his government. Her position in the government will be Justice Minister. This is the same position that she held when she served in the government of Ehud Olmert. She will be the leader of the negotiating team over the peace process with the Palestinians. Should Livni make an agreement with the Palestinians to establish a Palestinian state, the coalition agreement between Netanyahu and Livni specifies that any peace agreement with the Palestinians must be voted on and approved by both the inner cabinet of the government and the Israeli Knesset. Besides being justice minister, Livni will be a senior member in the efforts to restart negotiations with the Palestinians with the aim of achieving a peace agreement between Israel and the PLO. Netanyahu went on to say that peace negotiations with the Palestinians will be conducted under the guidelines of his 2009 Bar Ilan University speech, which called for a demilitarized Palestinian state, which recognizes Israel as a Jewish state, and makes sure that any peace agreement ensures Israel's security. A ministerial committee will be established to discuss the peace process based upon these principles and Netanyahu has authorized Zippy Livni to negotiate with the Palestinians. So Livni will be a member of Israel's security cabinet and will work with Netanyahu in the new foreign minister and defense minister in achieving a peace agreement with the Palestinians. Their agreement also specifies the goal of the government to increase equality in sharing the national burden of serving in the Israeli military, a reference to having ultra-Orthodox yeshiva students or those who study the Talmud or Jewish oral law all day to serve in the Israeli military, as well as seeking Israeli electoral reform, lowering the cost of living in Israel, and fighting racism. Likud representatives met with the ultra-Orthodox Sephardic party, Shaz, and its three leaders, Ari Derry, Eli Yishai, and Ariel Atlas to establish a united front in their demands for the drafting of ultra-Orthodox yeshiva students into the Israeli military. Shas is deciding whether to accept a proposal drawn up by National Economic Council Chairman Professor Eugene Candle to draft ultra-Orthodox yeshiva students. This plan calls for the Israeli military to draft upwards of 60% of ultra-Orthodox Israelis aged 18 to 24 within the next five years, and that the government would provide monetary incentives to those who comply while penalizing the yeshiva schools for those who don't comply. Shaz is expected to announce whether they will accept Professor Candle's proposal within the next week. Some top Likud officials say that they believe that Shaz will be joining the Netanyahu government. Meanwhile, the Ashkenazi ultra-Orthodox party, United Torah Judaism, is preparing an outline of principles detailing what political concessions they would be willing to make to join Netanyahu's coalition. This would include agreeing to evacuate isolated settlements in the West Bank, freezing Jewish construction in areas outside the main settlement blocks, and voting to not expand building in the large settlement blocks, and even consider ceasing any further funds to build new homes in the settlement areas in exchange for continuing the status quo that exists in the yeshivas and religious schools in not drafting ultra-Orthodox students into the Israeli military. Likud representatives also met with the leader of the Labor Party, which is a social economic party with socialist economic ideals headed by Shelley Yakimovich, who was reportedly offered the position of finance ministry. 
if Labour would join Netanyahu's government. However, Yakimovich refused this offer saying that Labour has served in Netanyahu's government in the past, which caused great political damage to the Labour Party. As a result, Labour will not be Netanyahu's contractors, neither in the social field nor in the political field, neither in the civil field. The gaps between Labour's worldview and that of Netanyahu's are enormous. The modern Orthodox Religious Zionist Party, Jewish Home, headed by Naftali Bennett, whose party members, while being Orthodox, do currently serve in the Israeli military and have daily jobs, along with the centrist secular party, Yeshatid, which means there's a future, headed by former Israeli journalist Yair Lapid, have entered into a strategic alliance together and have notified the representatives of Netanyahu's negotiating team in Likud Batenu that Jewish Home and Yeshatid have formed an alliance and will both enter the government together or both be excluded from joining the government. Both parties are in agreement that the ultra-Orthodox yeshiva students need to serve in the Israeli military and be integrated into Israeli society by holding daily jobs. However, the views of Jewish Home and Yeshatid regarding drafting ultra-Orthodox yeshiva students is being rejected by the ultra-Orthodox Shah's party and the ultra-Orthodox party of United Torah Judaism. The ultra-Orthodox parties have been in Netanyahu's government coalition in the past and are seen as natural partners within Netanyahu's government. However, because of the alliance being formed between Jewish Home and Yeshatid, who are in disagreement with the ultra-Orthodox regarding ultra-Orthodox yeshiva students serving in the Israeli military, this is greatly complicating Netanyahu's efforts to form a government, as he needs to establish a government coalition of at least 61 Knesset members, and if Labour is unwilling to join the government of Benjamin Netanyahu, then the only way that Netanyahu can form a government is by having the ultra-Orthodox in his coalition, along with either Jewish Home or Yeshatid, or make an agreement with Jewish Home and Yeshatid, which excludes the ultra-Orthodox. Likud sources have said that Benjamin Netanyahu is furious at what he believes is a conspiracy between Jewish Home and its leader Naftali Bennett and Yeshatid and its leader Yair Lapid, who Netanyahu believes is trying to prevent the ultra-Orthodox parties of Shah's and United Torah Judaism from joining his government coalition. Those close to Netanyahu have said that he has spoken in contempt for Jewish Home and Yeshatid complaining that their strategy does not strive to reach solutions on key political issues in establishing the government coalition, but instead whose policies are only serving the purpose whose end result is keeping the ultra-Orthodox parties from joining Netanyahu's government. Yeshatid leader Yair Lapid joked about his party being a major stumbling block for Likud in forming a new government, stating that all that Yeshatid and Jewish Home is doing is insisting that their policies within the new government is in accordance with each party's pre-election platforms. Lapid reiterated his position, being in agreement with Jewish Home leader Naftali Bennett, that Benjamin Netanyahu needs to lay down clear guidelines for his government coalition stating the new government's policies and principles before Yeshatid and Jewish Home can commit to joining the government. Lapid went on to say that Netanyahu needs to realize that the main issue in joining his government is not what cabinet position that leaders in the parties will have, rather it is the direction that Netanyahu wants to take the state of Israel and the principles in which he wants this government to have. I want him to concentrate on these things, because if he does, forming a government and making an agreement with Netanyahu 
will become very clear and simple. A week ago, Likud representatives offered Jewish home government positions if they would join the government within 24 hours. But Jewish home refused this offer because there was no coalition agreement that would clearly define the policies and principles of the new government coalition. Since this offer was made to Jewish home, Netanyahu's representatives did not have any meetings with either Jewish Home or Yeshatid for about a week. Jewish Home leader Naftali Bennett said, Regarding the coalition agreement made between Benjamin Netanyahu and Hatnua leader Zippy Livni, who agreed to join the government and lead peace negotiations with the Palestinians, Jewish Home officials said, The role given to Zippy Livni to lead the negotiations with the Palestinians is not and will not be acceptable to Jewish home because in the past Zippy Livni was willing to divide Jerusalem and agree to give large portions of the West Bank to the Palestinians for a Palestinian state. Yeshati leader Yair Lapid said that there was no longer a reason for his party to join the government and possibly become foreign minister because Zippy Livni has already been given the authority to lead peace negotiations with the Palestinians. In an attempt to reach various sects of the Jewish religious public, Jewish home leader Naftali Bennett met with rabbis and Jerusalem yeshiva students to discuss both religion and Zionism. Bennett said to them, Studying Torah serves Israel's interests as much as settling southern Israel in the northern Galilee area. However, serving in the Israeli military needs to be incorporated into the lives of Orthodox Jews. Things have changed in Israel so that the government needs to find a way to implement these policies. In advancing their call that all Israelis study Torah, that is not dictated by the ultra-Orthodox, Yeshatid Knesset member Dr. Ruth Calderon has initiated weekly Torah Bible studies led by Yeshatid Knesset Rabbi Shay Piron and Dove Lipman. More than 30 Knesset members attended the initial meeting. There is a growing sense in Israel that the Bible needs to form the basis of Israel's culture and policies, but that the ultra-Orthodox should not have a monopoly on biblical interpretation of what it means to be Jewish. After not talking for about a week, Likud representatives met again with Jewish Home. They mainly discussed the issue of drafting ultra-Orthodox students into the Israeli military. However, no agreement was made to join the government from these meetings. Likud representatives are planning on having renewed meetings with Jewish Home and the ultra-Orthodox Sephardic party Shah's in the coming week. Senior Likud officials said that Netanyahu is not willing to give in to the demands of Jewish home and Yeshatid, but would rather call for another round of elections instead. However, new poll results show that if Israel had new elections, that Yeshatid and Jewish home would be the big winners. In fact, Yeshatid would increase their Knesset representation from the present 19 seats to become Israel's largest party with 30 seats. If this happened, Yair Lapid would replace Benjamin Netanyahu as Prime Minister of Israel. And the poll suggests that Likud would drop from its present 31 seats to 24 seats, and Jewish Home would increase from 12 seats to 15. Given these poll results, Yeshati leader Yair Lapid said, Yeshati will be guided by principles which it will not compromise. We will have patience, even if it means not joining Netanyahu's government. Netanyahu has initially until March the 1st to form a government. However, he may request an extension through March the 15th. If the situation remains deadlocked and he's unable to form a government, he will be required to call for new Israeli elections. Until we do it again, Shalom in Yeshua the Messiah. Amen. Amen.